So what would be an ideal outcome of measure? You know, th thinking about that, it would be lovely to have a measure that really encapsulates what the patients look like on exam and what they look like from a disability standpoint and an activities of daily living standpoint, but it's tough to do, again, in ensuring that the scale really is valuable in all those different domains and coming up with, a, say, a single score. It's always nice to have single scores to follow patients with, and um, ideally, the more severe the patient is, the higher the number, the less affected they are, the lower the number, because you know, over time, I think more patients will fall into a better outcome, and it's easier to deal with smaller numbers when you're tracking patients clinically or even in clinical trials. So that type of pattern would be best. But whether we could actually accomplish a multimodal outcome measure that really works well, I'm not sure. It's potentially possible. Um, we've done that a little bit more, I, I would say, in myasthenia gravis, where the MG composite, for instance, encapsulates some measures of both function and actually what you see, say, on an examination, objective things. Um, so working in that direction and the immune-mediated neuropathies may help. You know, the rods is mostly an activity-based thing. The uh, neuropathy uh, um, impairment score, which has been used a long time um, from Mayo Clinic generation times, really is just following examination parameters. So um, perhaps a melding of different domains of what the overall patient's function and quality of life that would be something maybe to strive for. So again, with any scale, <laughs> really looking at the number of categories of responses, because when there's too many, when there's really more than seemingly three or four, it really becomes difficult to discriminate between them, and you lose some of the uh, ability of that scale to really discriminate patients over time. An ideal outcome measure for CIDP, in my mind, would be one that a patient could do on a daily basis or weekly basis that would correlate with what the physician sees when the patient's in the office. That would be pretty easy to complete and would be a good reflection of the actual functional level of the patient. Do we have such an ideal outcome measure today? Probably not. Um, the most ideal measure that many people are leaning toward now is probably the RODS, the ROSH overall disability scale. Uh, the problem with that is you need to use a statistical correction in order to use it optimally. So although there are some questions that can be easily answered by a patient which make it quite nice, we're not exactly sure as to whether each question actually signifies a specific measure of disability, which is equal in relation to every other question. That's an excellent question. So how might a composite score uh, be developed? Well, um, first of all, I think that uh, keeping in mind what the specific items that are uh, relevant to patients with CADP needs to be uh, considered and having uh, a composite that weighs each of them based on certain disease severity uh, would be extremely important as not all items or uh, measures of, uh, for instance, um, difficulties um, are equal. In addition to bed size exams and, and talking to patients, I really like to, to measure grip strength with a handheld grip strength device uh, and also a disability score with the, the rod score. And then there's some other things I assess too, uh, things like pain scores and fatigue scores and other disability scores and walking tests. Uh, but the ones I find most uh, important and helpful uh, are the rod's disability score and grip strength with a handheld grip strength device.